わかりましたそれではシロ私たちだけでジーに赴きましょう、mm, How about now? Let's, let's just stay at home Yeah, we're not We're not gonna go to the temple and get ourselves killed this time We're just gonna Not do that Yeah I'm with Tosaka I'm not gonna go to the temple I'm not gonna go to the temple あなたまで戦わないと言うのですかバカな今まで体を休めていたのは何のためです敵の所在が判明した以上打って出るのが戦いというものでしょう。Oh, your wound hasn't healed yet, Saber, as we've learned それは分かってるけど待つんだ、Saber And also, I was thinking, why was Ryder there? Hmm, that's Shinji's servant, right? In which case Didn't Shinji tell us about the master in the uh, in the temple? In which case, it, didn't Shinji just get us killed? You know, well, assuming that uh, we fall for his trap, right? Or rather, you know, follow his lead anyway. And, and and as it turns out, like yeah, his servant was working with the other like master in the temple, which is like, hmm, makes you very suspicious. You know? Uh, but I guess since we're not going to the temple this time, we would never learn that fact. Unfortunately. We don't know if Shinji is uh, trying to trick us or anything like that. そのような危険は当然です。はじめから無傷で勝利を得ようなどと思ってはいません。敵の罠が体を貫こうと、この首を渡さなければ戦える。どのような深手を追おうと、マスターさえ倒せればいいのではないのですか Yeah, but it doesn't help much if I get like killed, as in like, well, we got teleported, I guess, and then assassinated. That's right. Going to Ryudo's temple is certainly a suicide attack. As we've learned out, actually. There will be some obstacle on the only road heading to the temple. It's fine to accept that and go, but heading there without any plans is suicidal. No matter how strong Saber is, she has me as a handicap. If she pushes herself and fights, and if the result is... Uh, that image, that image keeps showing up over and over. Just like what happened at that time, I can't agree with that. いいですか、マスター。サーバントは傷を負うものです。それを恐れて戦いを避けるなど、私のマスターには許しません。ああ、許されなくて結構だ。セイバーが無茶をするんなら、何度だって止めるからな。それが嫌なら、さっさと体を
また俺もお前も友だ俺、なんて真似を繰り返すつもりか。Now, this is a little harsh, I guess. 冗談じゃない。俺はあんな、無残に殺されるなんて、二度とごめんだ。So? I thought she would argue right back, but instead she takes a breath and. She says as if apologizing. ひきょうで悪かったな。とにかくこっちから仕掛けることはまだしないぞ。俺だって竜道寺にいるマスターは放っておけない。けど俺たちは戦える状態じゃない。こんなんで戦ってやられちまったら、それこそ誰が竜道
but her master this time would not be able to fix his personality. So it would be her role to devote herself to being heartless. If the master is not going to fight, his sword will have to fight. But still, there will be no hindrance in battle. Confirming her own abilities, she returns her gaze to the moon. She has no more interest in the shed her master is sleeping in. As she has taken arms, the only thing in her is the will to defeat her enemy. I guess. You know how I said? Jokingly, that, uh, you know, when Shiro said, Ah, if you don't like it, go find someone else as your master. Well, <laughs> no, I don't think she's finding another master, but I guess she's just leaving. The moon glooms. Just as the large cloud covers the sky, Saber jumps over the wall of the house. She runs through the darkness. The silver knight runs through the sleeping town. There is only one destination, the sacred mountain on the outskirts of town, the Ryudo Temple, located on top of it. Actually, this might be a good idea, you know, because the reason we died last time is because Shiro was there and he was like teleported because he has no magical resistance. But if it's only just Saber and she has magical resistance, you know, then it might not be so bad. Because then we, we, they can't just kill the master easily. Because supposedly, well, Shiro is safe right now. Right? At home. So actually, it might be better for Saber to go by herself to the temple. It might work out, actually. I don't know. Or maybe not. I don't know. Because then she'll be facing at least two servants, right? Ryder and the other servant in the mountain, I assume. Castor. Right? That's what she said. Hmm. Even Saber understands how hard it will be to single-handedly kill the master of the temple. As Shiro says, it is obvious she will suffer great injury. In the worst case, she, be the, she will be the one killed. But what, what kind of servant would she be if she couldn't do something like this? The servant is supported by their superior abilities and the pride that they have built up. They have pride as heroes and confidence that they are the strongest who have fought through many battles. She is a heroic spirit passed down and honored from the ancient times, so defeat would not be acceptable no matter who the enemy is. No, even imagining defeat is unforgivable. Even though some childish parts remain, she is no exception. Because she is crowned with the name Saber, she cannot ignore her pride. The pride will not allow her just to observe when faced with an enemy. Therefore, she will not falter no matter what kind of trap is waiting, and all she can do is challenge by herself. If they say there is no chance of victory, she will create one with her own sword. The sword in her hand is a fine sword that has defeated many foes. As she has the invisible air, there's nothing for her to fear. Well, I mean, again, she's like, already been defeated, what, how many times? Uh, maybe only uh, two times, I think? Like, versus Lancer and versus Berserker? Um, well, Lancer, well, again, Lancer... Well, she was about to be defeated, but Lancer, like, retreated. It was kind of a, like a draw, I guess. And again, she's not in her like uh, most powerful state right now because she doesn't have enough magical energy to sustain her most, you know, most of her actual superior abilities. In which case, you know, is it smart to go by herself? I don't know. We'll find out. She runs through the mountain pass and up the road to the temple. What awaits her after the mountain pass are great stone stairs. And this is interesting actually because this is an interlude, I guess. We're just... 
Well, I was gonna say we were just like uh, from the like we just, I guess, uh, going through this interlude from the perspective of Saber. But actually, it's not from Saber in particular, actually, because we're not hearing her thoughts or anything. Um, it's more so that they're, I guess, I guess it's from third person still, like from a third person na- a narrator who, I assume, is not like a character in, like in the uh, visual novel. Because usually the narrator is Shiro, right? Right now it's just some, I guess, just like a just like a literal narrator who isn't like part of the story. So yeah, like a third person, third person narrative right now. This is different from the Ryu Do Tempo she remembers. The air is stagnant. The wind is dead. The ley line of the land is already contaminated. This place is a land of death. Once entered, one will not be able to exit alive. But there is no hesitation. Saber's speed does not drop one bit as she runs up the stairs. She runs through the scene. The sound of her kicking the stone steps echoes in the air. The mountain starts to squirm noisily. They are long stairs. The temple gate is far away even for Saber, who is running like an arrow. To run such a long distance without being detected is impossible. There will certainly be a surprise attack. The gate should not be easily reached. But no matter what scheme awaits, the only thing to do is defeat it in advance. Nothing can stop her now. Even if a berserker appears, she will break through it. That is the product of her determination and confidence. And at the top, when she is about to reach the temple gates, that obstacle appears. And I guess, yeah, this is the, the temple watcher or the gate watcher. Which was supposed to be there last time. And I guess he is here this time. Saber stops. Even she, determined to beat any enemy, is surprised by this enemy. A natural motion. The gallant figure of the man that appears is far too lacking in enmity and unbelievably, f- uh, unbelievably free of any openings. Kisama. Stopping, Saber readies her invisible sword. The man with the moon at his back wards off Saber's killing intent as if it were just a light breeze. Samurai ka? Samurai ka? She must be surprised by an opponent she has heard of but never seen before. Her second holy grail war. Even for she who has seen many heroic spirits, this is a first for a servant like this. Sweat forms on Saber's brow. Not because of fear, but because it is incomprehensible. It's not as if there haven't been strange servants like him before. There should be no servant more mysterious and suspicious than Archer from last time. In comparison to that, the servant in front of her has no fear for aspects nor a fearful weapon. That is why it is strange. Nothing can be felt from this man. There is no doubt that he's a servant, but there is no sense of any magical energy, nor a hero's noble phantasm. So beating him should be easy. Is it true that this match will be over in one blow? But her instincts tell her this. Do not underestimate him. This servant as a way to seize a certain kill. She cannot ap- approach. It could be said that the range of the man's weapon, the Japanese katana, is hard to judge. But above it, Saber's location is at a disadvantage. Yes, I have the high ground, Anakin. Above and below the stairs, there's about five meters between them. She would certainly receive that sword before she could run up and rush him. 
but nothing can be felt from that sword. It should be easy to repel it. So she should not hesitate and rush in, but Saber instinctively understands she cannot close in without care. She adjusts her stance slightly and glares at the enemy in front of her. His identity is unknown, but she should at least determine the class of this samurai. Saber asks, not expecting an answer. With a smile. Assassin, Sasaki Kojiro. The servant says so as if singing. It is only natural for Saber to be surprised. Because yeah, he just said his true name. Servants should hide their identities. Where in the world would you find a servant that just comes out with it himself? Assassin, the man who called himself Sasaki Kojiro, continues as if enjoying Saber's confusion. Saber surely does not know that this servant is a swordsman who wielded a katana called Monoho Shizao and was often rumored to have no match in this large world. No, what would change even if she knew? His birth is unknown and even his existence is uncertain. His story was only told through word of mouth. There is only one who knew the existence of this swordsman, that being the worthy arrival of the rare, sk uh, rare skilled swordsman, the one being his only enemy who defeated the man called Sasaki Kojiro. Which was uh, Musashi, right? Or I believe it's Musashi something? One cannot call this person a hero. The servant assassin, Sasaki Kojiro, is an existence quite unlike Saber. What servant would know the skills of a swordsman who is usually not treated as a hero? There are only two truths in front of her right now, that this man in front of her is her enemy, and that he has given his name. Saber's voice is in reply is heavy. For her, it is too risky to state her true name. She cannot reveal her true name no matter what torture she receives, and she has no intention of revealing it. But that is only for the sake of victory. She cannot disgrace the faith of a knight for such a thing. Clank. Assassin descends the stairs elegantly and confronts Saber. <laughs> On the other hand, you don't really look like a assassin or samurai's assassins. And also another servant, let's say like this rider, caster, and assassin all in one place. Does Shinji have his own alliance in that case? You know, trying to make an alliance with Shiro, we were assuming that he didn't know anything about the, you know, about the Holy Grail War. Or rather, well, he knows about the Holy Grail War, but he doesn't, he seems inexperienced. But as it turns out, he has like his own alliance right here. You know, rider, assassin, the caster. I don't know. You know, another step. 
Assassin descends the stairs and directs the point of his sword at Saber. The swordsman smiles happily. Answering, she readies her sword close to her. The silver light jumps, hardness and softness. The fight between two very different swordsmen begins under the moonlight. Oh, and we don't get to see the actual battle. Oh, I guess Hiro wakes up. And I assume he, well, he, he can't find Saber anywhere. And, uh, that's alarming. Also, there was, a well, there was, like, a pop-up that says status and weapon screens updated. I assume we get to see, uh, let's see. Assassin. All right, Sasaki Kojiro. Is neutral evil? Hmm. Presence concealment, because he is, he's an assassin, he can hide his presence. Again... I guess, like a samurai could be summoned into the assassin class. It's kind of weird though, because when I think assassin, I think of like, like a ninja or, you know, or a spy. I don't know if samurai counts. Hmm. Noble Phantasm, question mark. Agility A+, plus. I guess similar to, actually even faster, even faster than Lancer. Interesting. And very high luck, apparently. Oh, I'm good to know his details. Actually, because we know Sasuke Kojiro, the name. We look, we look this up on Google, apparently. And also, apparently, again, because it's kind of weird, because uh, this status screen and stuff was introduced to uh, Shiro as a way of understanding the servants. But in the interlude, Shiro wasn't even there, so we shouldn't know about Sasuke Kojiro anyway. But apparently, we do. Oh, well. Uh, doubt it, even though his name remains. Handsome swordsman has a very long sword. You know, long like katana sword, like a, a washing pole, is that what it's called? Well, I know about the washing pole because of Dark Souls. Anyway. Uh, she was so mystery. And yeah, he was written, like, they note him in the books written by Miyamoto Musashi, who is known as like a legendary samurai, well, apparently. From uh, his Chinese country, studying on the original Toda style, he likes the long sword. His stone style is called the Gun View. Traveled around the country as a master swordsman. Secret sword technique, Subame Gaishi. Could kill a flying swallow. Oh no, kill a bird. Uh, battle against Miyamoto Musashi. And then oh, he died. Oh, that's bad. For him, anyway. Uh, because of the sword's life, he could not fight while holding onto his sheath, so he would throw away, throw away his sheath in front of Musashi. And Musashi's quote when he saw that, Kojiro, you lose! All too famous. Apparently. Miyamoto Musashi is one of the Japan's best swordsmen. Sasuke Kojiro is known as Musashi's worthy rival, but his real figure is hazy like the moon and water. Well, they said that there was a person like him, we have to say the figure of Sasuke Kojiro, passed down to the present, is a fictional swordsman. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Can something... Like, can someone, actually, who doesn't really exist, or has a dubious existence, become a heroic spirit? Again, Rin mentioned, like, artificial gods. Or maybe. Uh, mind's eye? Fake? I don't, again, I don't know what this fake means. Fake. Resistance to changes in visibility caused by visual interference. Also a sixth sense, apparently. Able to see through his mind's eye. Noble Phantasm, we do not know. Hmm. 
Okay. Right. And weapon too as well. Yeah, mono, monoho, monoho chizao, apparently. A long sword said to be carried by the swordsman, Sasuke Kotiro. Laundry hanging pole. Yeah, like a washing pole. Again, I only know that name because of Dark Souls. Um, basically, like a really long katana. And the records is said to be 90 centimeters long. Uh, oh, but that's the one that the assassin wields in this story is 150 centimeters long, even longer. Amazing. Uh, in real battle, long range, range translates directly into an advantage. But when you're talking about sword, it must be admitted that such a length is out of the question. Like normally, yeah, you wouldn't want to have like a, such a ridiculously long sword. Effective in one-on-one -on -one battle, but it's like a wig would be tr trouble to use in a large-scale combat. Is that true? I don't know. Because actually, when you're thinking about long weapons, especially like spears um, and like pole arms, they're actually the best used in the formation when there is a bunch of people. Because the thing is, long range uh, in a one-on-one -on -one battle is a bit of an advantage, but once you get past that range, uh, then the other person with the long weapon is at a disadvantage uh, for the most part, because they have to, you know, somehow make the weapon, they're met with a weapon shorter, which like in the case of a spear, you would need to like, uh, you know, grab on to the, the uh, shorter end of the spear, right? So make, to make it shorter, you know, grab, like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, uh, instead of grab, like, instead of wielding the spear normally, you would uh, push it down you uh, push the tip down <laughs> or some I don't know I guess it's really hard to explain basically you make the spear like a bit shorter so you can handle the shorter range but uh, it's not the most effective way of using a spear and you know also using like the blunt edge as well anyway um uh, what was I talking about oh yeah because the spear and any kind, any kind of long weapons is best used in actually in formation of uh, like allies to the left and right of you so when the enemy does like, get past through your defenses, you know, at uh, get past your range, then you have people on the left and right of you, you know, allies, who can like, like uh, help you fight fight the enemy off, right? To your side, from your sides. In which case, yeah, it's better information, actually. It's not as good in on one-on-one, -on -one, though it can be, I guess. Uh, anyway, there are no swordsmen able to use his longsword satisfactory other than assassin. There are skills surpassing human limitations. Amazing. Anyway. I guess back to Shiro. When he woke up, I think. Yeah. From the shed. I wake up with a burning pain in my chest. I feel like I've had an ominous dream. <laughs> A heartburn or something? <laughs> it feels like my heart is hot. No, it's more like forcibly having heat driven into my heart from outside. A small doubt. Before I think what it could be, my body starts to run. <laughs> I guess, yeah, she will just ex instinctively knows that Saber left. Or something. I open the Fusama and rush into the room Saber should be sleeping in. No, it has to be. If she's not here, she must have gone to Ryudo Temple by herself. Uh, are we gonna chase after her? That sounds like a bad idea. I'm so angry it gives me a headache. I didn't say I don't want I don't want to fight. I just I don't want to see her get hurt. Uh, keep saying that, Shiro. You know, we get it. And nothing will happen sitting here. I have to hurry to Ryudo Temple. I can't let Saber fight alone. Yeah, I knew it. We're gonna like rush to the temple. But like that the last time we did that. It didn't go well. Hmm. No, I don't even... I don't know what good I'll be even if I go there. But there should be something I'm able to do. 
いつめ女の子なんだからもうちょっとおとなしくしてろってんだよ<laughs> Again, Shiro. I mean, even with context, it's kind of like you're being a bit. I mean, well, you're being sexist, basically, Shiro. I don't know why. Uh, anyway. I run. I run outside without changing. Take out the bike near the entrance and start to pedal with all my might. And again, I, I mean, I don't know. You're a girl, so be more obedient. That's like. That's. that's, that's uh, It's so sexist. But at the same time, I guess from his perspective, it's the fact that he can't get that prejudice out. The fact that, you know, girls should be protected and they're weak, you know? You should, men should protect the girl or whatever. I guess, again, that old fashioned, like, uh. chivalry, I guess you could call it. But also at the same time, he said to himself, like, what good will he do if he goes there? We just end up being killed again. I go down the hill with no brakes. About 40 minutes to Ryudo Temple, even if I hurry. I don't know when Saber left, but I have to catch up to her, and every minute counts. Oh, another interlude? Are we back? Oh, we're back to the battle. The points of the swords cross. The swords are swung many times. Numerous blows. The sword and the katana repel each other, scattering sparks. The session of more than a few dozen blows does not change the positions of the two. Assassin, positioned above, does not retreat even a step. And Saber, trying to ascend the stairs, is unable to draw nearer and uselessly wastes time and spirit. Saber rushes in again. Assassin swings his longsword without difficulty and defends completely against Saber's charge. No, it isn't as simple as defending. If Saber's, is,、uh, Saber's sword is lightning, Assassin's sword is a hurricane. Do 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 anyway. Even though it does not match Saber in speed or power, its elastic tracks pair or or what how you say its elastic tracks parry Saber's every blow. And the counter increases speed and flows towards Saber's neck like a strong wind. When Saber steps in again after avoiding that attack, the sword she has avoided comes at her again in no time. In contrast to the straight path Saber swords take, Assassin's sword takes a curved path. Assassin's blade is graceful, but since it moves in an arc, it does not take the shortest route. So she, she shouldn't be able to make it in time against Saber's sword moving in a straight line. But there's something about Assassin that reduces that difference to zero. Is a、uh, is A plus agility maybe? The charge stops. The sword won't make it in time against his sword's counterattack. She steps back, knowing the only way she can avoid it is to retreat. Assassin's swordplay is fascinatingly beautiful, but at the same time, it is so fast that it's hard to follow. Is that contradiction because of the assassin's skill or the unfavorable position of attacking someone on higher ground? Without a definite answer, she avoids the sword pursuing her and parries the point trying to pierce her neck. When she notices, she has retreated a few more steps. It's such a long sword. <laughs> It should be easy to go inside on him once she has parried it away once. But she somehow cannot manage to do so. The enemy's excellent skill and the definitely disadvantaged ground. Saber bites her lips, thinking she would not have this much trouble with that longsword on flat ground. Assassin does not move. For him, this is only a battle of defense. 
He has no need to chase the retreating saber without reason, nor forsake his advantage of higher ground. ミレバ刀を見ることさえ初めてであろう。私の剣筋は邪道でな。波の者ならばまず一撃で首を落とす。それをここまで防ぐとは嬉しいぞ、セイバー。加えて打ち込みも素晴らしい。その勝負でこれ
力を競い合うことはできん元より刀というものはそういうものだ西洋の剣はその重さと力で物を叩き切るだが我らの刀は速さと技で物を断ち切るのだ is, is that true? I don't, I don't think that's a universal truth <笑>戦いが噛み合わぬのは道理であろうまあしかしこれではいささか今日がそがれるもう良い頃合いだぞセイバーいい加減手の内を隠すのはやめにしろアサシ私があなたに手加減しているとでもしていないとでも言うのか何のつもりかは知らんが剣を鞘に収めたまま戦とはなめられたものだ私程度では本気を出すまでもないということか Well I mean I guess we know the reason why Saber isn't going you know full power is the fact that he has a limited supply of magical energy But the assassin is goading her on so それでも応じないという顔だなよかろうならばここまでだお前が出し惜しみをするのなら先に我が秘剣をお見せしよう Saying so The swordsman of the long sword comes down next to Saber To relinquish his advantage of being overhead is the same as losing for Assassin. Assassin is certainly a skilled swordsman, but that is only with the conditions of these geographical features. If they are to fight on the same level, it's possible for a saber to repel Assassin's attack and slash his neck. But Assassin would know this as well. So why? I guess he's confident. That his special technique will take care of Saber. Saber's instincts react to that voice. He's telling the truth. It is not advantageous at all for Saber that Assassin has come down. The instincts that have got her through numerous battles warn her of her misunderstanding. She readies her sword at once. There is no time to hesitate. She only has to attack with a sword before Assassin swings his longsword. There's about three meters of distance between them. That is a stance that the swordsman has not yet shown in this battle. Saber charges in. The longsword is, use is useless now. As long as she's inside its range, its length will backfire. Yeah, that's what I mentioned before, right? In, in the one-on-one -on -one battle, if as long as you get through that range, it uh, won't be as effective. But... Tsubamigaishi. Tsubamigaishi. Hey, isn't that that technique that kills a flying swallow? Such logic does not exist with this swordsman. The lightning strikes. An evil strike that attacks with speed, overwhelming Saber. But it is not as if Saber cannot block such an attack. She moves her attacking sword into defense as she repels Assassin's full power attack. Even Assassin will have an opening if that attack is repelled. In the small instant where she tries to slice Assassin's stomach, In that instant, Saber trusts her instincts and rolls down the stone steps. Dodge roll, Dark Souls style. She rolls down as if fleeing. She doesn't even soften her landing. Ah, her weight is too high, so she did a fat roll. Saber spins her body frantically and rolls down the stairs without killing her speed. Saber stops rolling and stands back up. She stares at the swordsman standing calmly. 
ほうかわしたかは我が秘剣さすがはスイバーツバメなどとは格が違う信じられない今のはまさか何そう大した芸ではないたまさかツバメを切ろうと思いつき身についただけのものだからな He raises his long sword a little, as if to trace the movement of the technique that inspired fear in Saber. Mielka, Saber. Tsubamewana. Kazeo ukete katana o yokeru. Hayakaroga o sokaroga kankewana. Dono yona katana de aroto. Taiki o frua sazuniwa frenu de aro. Then, Yuen. Dono yona ichigiki de are. ツバメを立つことはできなかった。所詮、刀など一本線に過ぎぬ。縦横に空を行くツバメを捕らえられぬは道理よな。ならば、逃げ道を囲めばいいだけのこと。一の立ちでツバメを襲い、風を読んで避けるツバメの逃げ道を、続く二の立ちで取り囲む。しかし連中は素早くてなこの長刀ではまず二のたちが間に合わんことを成したければ一息のうちほぼ同時に行わなければならなかったがそのような真似は人の技ではない叶うことなどあるまいと承知したものだがあいにくと他にやることもなかったのでな<笑> He had no life. 一年寄進に通じるというが気がつけばこの通りよツバメを立つというくだらぬ思いつきは複数の立ち筋で牢獄を作り上げる秘剣となった。Well, poor swallows! How many swallows did you kill trying to think up that technique? In her mind, Saber disagrees with Assassin's words. It's wrong! That technique is not as simple as that. About the same time? No. The two blows came at exactly the same time. Assassin's Sasuke Kojiro's longsword doubled its existence for just that instant. Kishua Zero Lech. None no magic mo scars. Tada Kengi like the Hog no Iki ni Tashita Servant. Multi dimensional refraction phenomenon. Hmm. That fact is what should be admired. That one blow made it clear. Sasuke Kojiro does not have a noble phantasm like heroic spirits have. He, or he has only his demonic technique made possible by his godlike skill. It's impossible, but this mere human is equal to heroic spirits armed with noble phantasms. <laughs> ツバメ外事の奇跡は本来三つもうわずかに広ければ横の一撃も加えられたのだが、hmm. I guess yeah, it wasn't his fault technique そうでしょうねそうでなければ不完全ですすべてが同時であるならミノたちはどうしても遅くなるそれを補うために横方向への離脱を阻む三の立ちがあるはずだいい飲み込みの速さだだからこそ我が秘剣をかわしたか素晴らしいぞセイバー素晴らしいこのような属性に呼び出された我が身を呪ったがそれも今宵まで生前ではかなわなかった立ち合い我が秘剣を存分に振る舞える殺し合いができるのならば呼び出された甲斐があるというもの Assassin readies his sword once again and comes down the stairs. He must be after Saber's neck. Saber is not confident if she will be able to avoid that secret technique again. Like Lancer's Guy Bog, Assassin's Tsubame Gaishi is something that cannot be allowed to begin. No, unlike Guy Bog, Guy Bog, Guy, Guy Bog, uh, that allows you to find a countermeasure once you find out it will go for the heart. There are no possible counters for Assassin's secret technique, even when you know about it. 
If there is a countermeasure, it is not it is only not to let him use it. To beat it, she must attack him with her strongest blow before Assassin uses that technique. She lowers her arms. She lowers her sword as if to stick it into the ground. She glares at Assassin, who is approaching her. Assassin stops descending the steps and readies himself for a certain kill. Saber looks at him bravely. Saber releases her own restraints. The air shakes. As if acting in response to her will, the sword erupts with a massive amount of wind. Assassin retreats a bit. The wind pressure released from Saber is extraordinary. Not only Assassin, but even the large firm trees of the forest are shaking and creaking. That's a lot of wind. It is a flow of wind like an explosion. The trapped air is released and explodes outward. This raging wind that would easily blow away a normal person is coming out from Saber's sword. Wow. That is the power of a sword. Invisible air is a sword that has wind sealed in it. The sword that covers itself in compressed wind changes the refraction of light to make it look invisible. So this phenomenon occurs once the wind is released. The released wind seeks escape and emits itself chaotically into the surroundings. In that instant, it is the commanding magic of the sword that allows her to freely manipulate the ranging of the raging wind. Also, she has two ahoges now. Amazing. With Saber possessing incredible amounts of magical energy, she should be able to hold this boundary field for a few minutes. As proof, her sword is still invisible even though she has already released this much wind. The power of the raging wind does not abate. The wind emitting from Saber's sword is about to engulf Assassin. Assassin closes in against the blinding raging wind. Saber's arms move. To attack Assassin who is calmly advancing in the strong wind that allows no approach, the sword clad in wind roars and... And... I guess we'll find what- find out what happens? When, I guess, Shiro arrives at the temple. <laughs>